In this video, we're going to show you two different ways to connect your phone to an audio mixer, and we're going to show you four different ways to connect your audio mixer back to your phone. So it does not matter which way you need it, this video will work for you. If you're using a digital audio mixer or an analog audio mixer, an iPhone or an Android, all the tips and tricks that we're going to show you in this video will work for you. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that we show you in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find everything that we use from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Okay, let's get right to it. Let's connect our phone to an audio mixer. Before we make the physical connection for the demo, let's quickly talk through what we're trying to achieve here. We want to take a line level signal, that's stereo, out of our phone and connect that to a line level input on our audio mixer, preferably something that's stereo and is already panned left and right for us. So let's look at the options. First of all, we can convert the audio from our phone to an XLR input on our audio mixer, but that's a bad idea for a bunch of different reasons. One, if phantom power is turned on, that phantom power will come through the XLR output and it could damage your phone. So we want to avoid this if at all possible, even if phantom power is off, the chance that it could get turned on and hurt our phone is a bad idea. Plus, XLR inputs by default are mic level. They're expecting a tiny electrical current coming from a microphone that is converting acoustic energy to electrical signal. It's an order of magnitude quieter than a line level input. If we plugged our line level signal from our phone into these inputs, we get clipping, peaking, distortion. It would not sound good. So what other options do we have? Inside these combi jack inputs, we could connect a quarter inch cable. That would be line level input. So the exterior XLR input on these jacks is mic level, but the quarter inch input on these jacks is expecting a line level signal. But I don't like doing this for a bunch of different reasons. It ties up our most valuable microphone level inputs, and then you have to manually pan it. So we're gonna go down to these quarter inch line level inputs. If we connect to there, it'll already be panned and it's expecting a line level signal. On this audio mixer, the MG10XU, we also have RCA line level inputs. It doesn't really matter which one we use, but I prefer to use quarter inch inputs. Okay, so most phones now don't have any type of headphone jack anymore. So you're gonna need some type of adapter. I use a Lightning to TRRS adapter. I prefer to get the official ones from Apple. If you're Android, you can get a USB-C to TRRS adapter. The other thing I want to touch on is we always get the TRRS 8th inch adapter because that allows us to later plug in a microphone if we also want to get a headphone output. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit. Okay, so let's connect this to our phone. Next, we're going to use a cable like this. This will take that TRS, so a stereo image, out of our phone and connect it to two quarter inch TS jacks. So this is an unbalanced cable. You won't want to run this longer than 10 feet or you could get static or interference or that type of thing. Let's connect this to the adapter. Now these TS jacks, red is always right. Let's connect those to the line level inputs on our audio mixer. Next, I'm gonna hit play on our music. Our stereo input is up and we have our volume control here. You can hear the audio coming from the phone now because I'm recording with the USB of the audio mixer. I'm gonna turn that down now. So this is great. We get a stereo image into line level inputs and you heard it sound really good there. Now, what do we do if we need a longer distance run? We need to balance this audio signal. The only way to balance an unbalanced audio signal is to use a transformer or a DI box. I like using the radial DI boxes, but we're going to put some links down in the description below if you want to check some out. How these work is you plug your line level input into it. It will balance it and spit out balanced mic level XLR cable. So we can connect this now. Like I said before, we will plug black into left and red into right. Then we can connect this DI box to our audio mixer. Now, the beauty about balanced cable is theoretically you can run up to a thousand feet. So if you ever need to bring a source at a live event from up on the stage all the way back to the soundboard, this is exactly how you would do it. Okay, so we'll connect 
the red is right. We'll take this to input two on our audio mixer. Now I did mention before that you don't want to run phantom power to your phone. The DI box will protect your phone. Anytime you go to a quarter inch cable, you can be assured that there is no phantom power going through. So even if we did turn this on, it wouldn't go through the DI box to our phone. So that's a really nice feature. I'm gonna connect this to the left output of our audio mixer. Connect that there. Next, double check our music still playing. We can turn up the level knob on both of these channels and then we can adjust the gain to bring it up. Now you can hear that we're getting music from the phone through the DI box to our audio mixer. This is a balanced option, so it'll give you a longer distance cable run and you can use long XLR cables if you need to. There is no real quality difference between either one of these options. If you use option one here, just keep the cable shorter than 10 feet and you get good quality audio. And if you need longer than 10 feet, use a DI box and then use whatever length of XLR cable that you need. Okay, next let's connect our audio mixer to our phone. First of all, we need to quickly talk about software. We wanna make sure that the software that we're using on the phone allows us to select the audio from the audio mixer instead of using the built-in microphone. On Android, you can use open camera. There's a setting in there that opens up a menu that allows you to make this selection. If you're on an iPhone, you can use the default camera app. You just need to open it swipe over to video, then connect your audio mixer, and it does work properly. It just doesn't give you any notification or pop-up or anything. It's not very transparent. You just need to kind of trust the system. For that reason, I like using ProMovie. It gives you the option to select your input source, some fine-tuning options, and it gives you some levels on the screen to make sure that you're not peaking or clipping or anything like that. Okay, next, let's talk about the outputs on your audio mixer. Of course, you have your main stereo outputs. That's what we can use a lot of the time if we're just using this audio mixer to feed our live stream. XLR and balanced quarter inch will work for us in this video. Now, if you are running a hybrid event, an in-person event with a sound system, then you might want independent control of the audio level that's going to your phone. For that reason, I would use the monitor outputs. Typically, you use these for reference monitors on your desk or something like that. But in this case, it would give you an independent volume knobs so you can fine tune the audio that's coming from your audio mixer to your phone without messing up the main stereo mix if you are doing a hybrid event. Of course, there is a third option of using an aux output if you wanna do that as well. The downside of using an aux output is that it is just mono and you'll lose your stereo sound. Okay, so for method one to connect our audio mixer to our phone, we need to use the same lightning to TRRS adapter that we used in the first half of this video. If you're on Android, you can use a USB-C to TRRS adapter. It does need to be a TRRS for this to work. Okay, connect that to your phone. Now let's open up the software that we talked about earlier. I'm going to open up ProMovie. I'm gonna go into my audio settings. And here you can see that it's on iPhone microphone. So we need to change that. We're gonna connect a headset adapter to our phone. This is a really cool cable. It goes eighth inch TRRS. And then on the other end, on the breakout end, it gives you a headphone jack with stereo left and right. So you can plug your headphones in there or connect it to an audio mixer or do whatever you're doing. And then it gives you an XLR microphone input as if it's a headset into your phone. Let's connect that to the phone. Now you can see that headset microphone is selected. That pop-up came into ProMovie, so we know that it's working as intended. Next, we can connect that XLR input of the phone to the XLR output of our audio mixer. I'm gonna do that now. Next, I'm gonna turn up the main stereo output on our audio mixer. Then I'm gonna turn up the audio that's coming in from our laptop. I'm gonna hit OK on the phone to get out of this so we can see what we're doing. Now you can see that we're really clipping. So I'm gonna turn it down quite a bit there. And that's a lot better. Now this brings up one issue with this method. We're plugging in a line level output from our audio mixer to a microphone level input on our phone. So this is quite a bit louder than what the phone is made for. So all these knobs are gonna feel really sensitive and really touchy. For this method, I would recommend using the monitor output to give you a little bit more control over this level of sensitivity. Another issue of doing this is that 
it is just mono. But let's disconnect this XLR cable, and I'm going to convert it to quarter inch here. I'm going to disconnect from the main XLR output of the audio mixer and use this converter cable to convert it to quarter inch to go to the monitor outputs. And this gives us a bit more flexibility to turn down that output and do a more appropriate range for the volume on our iPhone. Okay, so for option two, we're gonna connect the USB output of our audio mixer here to the input of our phone. This will give us a stereo input, so we'll get the left and right side of our audio mixer. And two, it'll be more appropriately balanced so the knobs don't feel quite so sensitive and we can reset everything to unity and gain in the proper way to use an audio mixer. We don't have to worry about peaking or clipping as much with this method. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna connect a camera adapter to our phone. The reason for this camera adapter is twofold. One, it converts lightning to USB, plus it gives an extra lightning port so we can charge our phone while we're live streaming. This is a really nice upgrade from option one. We don't have to worry about battery drain or anything like that any longer. Plus we just get an easy to use USB input for our iPhone. If you're an Android, there are similar devices as well, but you don't have to worry about this as much since the bottom of your phone is just USB. I'm gonna connect this to the phone now. Okay, next I'm gonna connect the USB output of my audio mixer to the USB input on this camera adapter that I just put on. Okay, so now you can see on the phone there that MGXU, that's the name of this audio mixer, showed up. This would be a very similar process for a digital audio mixer as well that has USB outputs. So now that that MGXU is selected, I'm gonna hit OK. Next, I'm gonna turn up the output on our audio mixer here, and you can see that the levels are moving. I'm gonna turn this all the way up to that triangle zero or unity position, and I'm gonna turn up the output of the music as well. And you can see that this is working well and sounds well as well. This is a really simple way to connect your audio mixer to your phone if you have a USB output. Okay, the next option is actually super cool. It's purpose built for exactly what we're doing. We have the iRig Stream. This device literally exists to connect an audio mixer or any other line level signal to your phone. It's a small little box. It's really easy to use. I'm gonna put it down on the table here. With it, you do get three USB cables. It's Android friendly, iOS friendly, or you can plug it into your computer if you need to. It comes with Lightning, USB-C, or USB-A. Now, I would use the Lightning cable for my phone normally, but I like using this camera adapter because it allows me to charge my phone if I want to. So I'm gonna use a normal USB-A cable that came with this iRig Stream plugged into the camera adapter so then I can keep my phone charged if I was doing this for real. So I can connect this to the back of the camera adapter and the other end to the iRig stream. And after a couple seconds, you can see that the iRig stream does show up in our phone. So I'm gonna hit okay. Next, we can use a cable like this. This will take the quarter inch outputs of our audio mixer, it's quarter inch TS and convert it to RCA for the input on the bottom of the iRig stream. This is unbalanced, so you don't wanna run this longer than 10 feet if you can avoid it. I'm gonna connect this now. So black is left, red is right. I'm gonna connect this to the monitor output of our audio mixer. On the bottom of the iRig, I'm gonna connect the RCA cables as well. Now I'm gonna turn the iRig up to about 50%. You can see that it's getting a pretty good signal there. It says that it's happy. If we look at our phone, our level, our meter here is up a, it's a little bit quiet to me. So I'm going to use the monitor output knob on the mixer to get it a little bit louder. And somewhere around there is exactly where we want it. I think this is the device that I would get to do this the most often. It's the most reliable. It gives you a bunch of different points to adjust it. You can see that we are getting more level than the previous solution and we still have a lot of adjustability. We can adjust our input channel, our monitor output, or the input preamp that's built into the iRig stream before it gets to our phone. It's small, it's compact, and it's portable, and it uses a high quality cable to make the connection. This is a really good solution. Okay, so what happens if you need stereo sound, your audio mixer doesn't have a USB output, and maybe you consider the iRig stream to be a bit of a one-trick pony. It is. It's really only built for this device. But maybe you want something a bit more versatile to build out your home studio that'll give you more flexibility elsewhere. In that case, you want to connect your audio mixer to an audio interface. 
then connect your audio interface to your phone. Now this is a little bit more complicated, but we're gonna walk through all the steps here. The first issue with this is that your phone can't power an audio interface. We need to connect the audio interface to a powered USB hub, then connect it to your phone. Let's walk through that now. So a powered USB hub has an external power supply. There's a cable that goes into it that's plugged into the wall outlet. You can't use a normal USB hub for this. On the back of the device, there's a USB cable that we're gonna connect to our phone. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm still using the camera adapter because I still like that the camera adapter gives me the added benefit of being able to plug the phone into the wall so I don't run out of battery. Okay, next we need to connect the audio interface to our powered USB hub. I have a USB-C to USB-A cable to do that. We have links down in the description below for everything in this video. Okay, so now you can see it's drawing power there and you should see the lights on the audio interface turn on. And on the phone itself, it sees the Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface. So I'm gonna hit okay. This is great. Next, we're gonna use a TRS cable, quarter inch TRS. So it has three sections, a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. This is a perfect cable to connect to our audio interface. I'm gonna pull this out of the stereo output on our audio interface. I'm gonna use the monitor outputs again. I'm gonna use red as right, plug that into input two, and use black as left for input one. Now, as we said before at the very beginning of this video, anything quarter inch is line level input. So we don't want to go TRS to XLR because that would put us into mic level inputs on the audio interface. It's not quite as good. It'll be really sensitive and you're prone to things like peaking and clipping. A TRS cable is the best cable for the job in this case. Next, we can go over to our audio interface, turn both preamps up to about 50% and then we'll increase our monitor output on our audio mixer. Now you can see here it's peaking quite a bit, so I'm gonna turn down the inputs on our audio interface. I like having the main monitor output on the audio mixer at about 50%, somewhere around there. So I think we're getting dialed in. Now if we look over at the phone, you can see that the level is coming in right where we want it to be, about 75%, just below the yellow. We still have a lot of flexibility. We could turn up the preamps on the audio interface here quite a bit. We can turn up the monitor output on the audio mixer quite a bit, or we can adjust the level on the channel strip itself. So we have lots of different options here. This is the more deluxe option. This is the nicest piece of gear. So this is more expensive, but it also does give you more flexibility in other parts of your studio. We covered a lot of ground in this video. We showed you two ways to connect your phone to your audio mixer using a DI box or just going straight in with a headphone to dual TS cable. And to connect your audio mixer back to your phone, we use the headset breakout cable. We connected the audio mixer directly using a USB output. We use the iRig, which I think is my favorite solution out of the whole thing, which is a little bit purpose-built. It's a bit of a one-trick pony, but it's perfect for what we're trying to do. And we connected an external high-quality audio interface directly to the phone. That's probably the best, highest quality result, but it is also the most expensive. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.